So, let's get started. Good day, ladles and jelly spoons, and welcome to this game on Overgrowth Ladder Edition, where in the top right-hand side, Sarius Black is playing as our Red Zerg. He is our hero and replay submitter. Thank you for the replay, Sarius Black. And his opponent in the bottom right-hand side, the foe, the enemy playing for Team Takomi, it's Iran. And I just pushed a cable that made something weird happen, and I don't know what disconnected, but hopefully you can still hear me and see everything. In any case... We're looking at ZVT on Overgrowth, the most popular map since uh, Frost, I think. But and now I have some problems with my speakers. So while this is building up, and we're seeing the standard start to a standard game, I'm going to check some cables. There we go. That should have fixed that. And right now. We're seeing a fairly standard start from a Terran player. We're seeing a fairly standard start from a Zerg player. I'm kind of anticipating a hatch first. Because Zerg can get away with that on pretty much every map known to man versus Terran. Yes, you might have to deal with the Reaper for a few seconds time, but you can generally time it out. Such that your queens are out in enough time to repel any kind of assault. And Sirius Black going for exactly that. No scout from the Terran because presumably they're going to go for some kind of Reaper based play. No, no they're not. Ooh, interesting. Going for another Rax. That's really interesting. Now, what the hell is doing? What the hell is rallied like this? Oh, the drone's going to go. The drone's going to go see. Could be entertaining. And now we're having more hum from those. Yep. Solve the problem with the hissing speaker. Another rack's coming up, which actually our Zoke player is going to scout real fast. If he sees it, oh my god, he's not actually going to see it at all. Needs to see it though, needs to see it! Needs to see it! Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is, and when there's one, there might be another, so there's three barracks coming up. Which actually means that Sirius Black is in potentially some trouble, actually. He needs to get some lings up. The wall is up now, though, so the information that he has is that his opponent has no gas but three racks, and I'm not sure I approve of this, because what you do need is you need gas. Uh, I don't know, Kev, I don't know. By the way, I love that expression, I don't know, Kev. They've stolen, I've used it a lot. Even though I don't actually know anyone who plays StarCraft called Kev. Or rather, I know of one, but I don't know him personally. I would love to know him personally. Seems like a nice guy. In any case, Sarah's like getting up that gas and presumably saturate the gas fairly quickly because it turns out speedlings are better than non-speedling. In several ways, actually. Partly because, you know, ooh, actually this right here is a big strategic weakness for our Terran player that Iran just doesn't know about because this is a thing where Nidus Worms can come up here and then empty a whole ton of Zerg into your base and there's nothing you can do about it. If you don't see it coming. Well, anything else, if you put a queen in there, creep teamers mean that they can start creeping up your base and then you have to waste scans to try and get rid of it. And anyway, Sirius Black not supply blocked. Our Terran player has just managed to get out of said supply block and been making a ton of marines. This is a seriously sized marine force. Now they're moving out. I think this might actually be a push. And this would be a brutal little push. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's repellable, but at the same time, there's going to be a lot of links required. And that overlord might just die. If it's lucky, it will not. But I think it won't be lucky. I think it's going to die. And I think actually that's going to be Sirius Black's cue to start making a shit ton of stuff. And the drones that are coming out are unluckily just at the wrong time. Sirius Black needs to make another Overlord and get those Lings out of there right now. Except that one, which needs to not go past the Marines on its way back. Sirius Black, however, needs to make a spine and therefore it is, therefore is doing so and needs to make a shit ton of lings! How many lava? 11 lava, that could be 22 lings, and there is enough minerals for it! Why are they not being made? Well, the lings are going to go in and try and do what they can, but there's a lot of marines here, and there's a lot of marines here. 18 lings on the way. The thing is, this marine force is super effective, and the drone's being pulled to try and attack, but Spinecrawler being killed off before it can do a damn thing. These marine, this marine force is actually doing a really good job! 26 lings on the way, however, means that this force will be attacked and killed off fairly fast. But not cost effectively for our Zerg player, unfortunately. The loss of that queen, quite brutal. You do not want to lose queens this early in the game. Um, I don't know, Kev. That said, there's a lot of lings now, and, and this wall is defended by marines. So if Baneling Nest were to be a thing... Oh, wait. Yep, 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 yep. Turns out it's totally a thing, and at this point, our Zerg player can just bust up this ramp and kill him, actually, if he can get some good Baneling connections on this wall. I think, you know, maybe eight Banelings going through one side. Boom, job done. 
Um, but the fact that there's no natural is actually to be expected at this point. There's no way that our Zerg player should expect a natural given the amount of Marines who just came at him. <coughs> Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Creep joining the bases is really important for manoeuvring of queens, especially given that the Terran player has the opportunity now to go for Banshees if they choose to do so. They are not choosing to do so, but Stim is not on the way yet and neither is Combat Shields, and that might be a bit of a weakness in our Terran player's game. Especially since the possibility of Banelings is real. Marines pushing out. I'm gonna see the Lings. Just... Oh shit, the wall is down. The wall is down. If he goes in now, no, the wall is up. And those marines are going to have to pull back a little. But they're going to get surrounded and murdered in no short order. This will have been cost effective for our Zerg player because it turns out Lings would surround up pretty good. And yes, if you want, if Charles Bay, if you want to send in a TBT with a 14 barracks pushing it, by all means do. I would enjoy casting it. The thing is, at this stage, nine Banelings is enough to bust up that ramp and kill all the marines at the top. The weird thing is, if you actually attack the racks with them, then you kill both of those supply depots at once, which will supply block our Terran forever. Not necessarily destroy that one, but it does mean that you can deny, you can supply block him again by going through that. But yeah, this this could be a bit of an unpleasant one. The links need to pull back. There's no room for the banelings to get through, so how are they going to do it? I don't know, Kev, but it works anyway. Oh, in they go, and now there's links in the main. I repeat, there are lanes in the main. This is not a drill. The Zerglings are in the main, and bad things are about to happen to your life. No wall for you. Stop walling in. I want to kill everything you've ever made. And everything you're ever going to make. Now the drill! Oh my god! Oh, The Bane going to get in, and those workers are going to suffer horribly and then die. This is a really nice push by Sirius Black. I really don't think there's anything Iran can do to come back from this one. I think it might be game. In fact, it really should be game. If Iran can come back from this, Iran is confirmed, I don't know, Empire cast. I say Empire, it's like a Cascade cast now. And those buildings are on fire, and the base is lifted, because it turns out that the Terran player wants to prolong the game. If you're feeling like a douchebag, what you do here is you put a hatch down, and then you say, oh, wait, the base is floating out. Our Terran player does not want to quit yet, and is therefore floating buildings away. Which is a bit of a douchebag move because then you have to tack up to Spire and make Mutalisks. That said, I don't know, Terran might be trying to cut back into this. Terran has mules available and enough money to make another orbital, so it's possible to do that. Problem is, they've got 22 supply? 22 supply. Yep. About that. The only thing our Zog player really needs to do now is task an overlord to kill off a, to follow each one of these things. Just, just follow it with an overlord so you know where it's gone. Because our Terran players decided to be a douchebag. That said, he's also trying to land at the gold base, which could be quite lucrative if Sirius Black wasn't going to basically be able to search the whole frickin' map with Lings. In fact, there's going to be a Ling at every expansion available. Yep, there we go. Sirius Black sees it, sends in a few more Lings, just to, just, just, just to chase it away at this stage. Terran player not really being able to do an awful lot. The thing is, at this stage, you only need one Mutalisk to, to win. You need one Muta, and that's it. That's all you need. Although, to be fair, Corrupted will probably be a better idea at this point. 18 drones coming out because Sirius Black has all the time in the world. His opponent has literally zero supply. I, I have to admit, like, there we go. Finally, the Terran player realizes that all is lost and nothing will come of this. But for now... It's time to move on, and wait, how long is this replay now? Uh, wow we Okay, so uh, Sirius Black, and we're going to follow this through. We might speed things along a bit, but Sirius Black is all like, I'm going to kill all of your buildings. Um, weirdly enough, Charles Wayne, that's not actually what happened there. The, the Terran player tried to micro the buildings around and actually come back into the game, so it wasn't just BM. It was, in fact, strategizing. The problem is, the Zerg player proved able to follow all bases everywhere, and he wasn't able to land in the bottom right-hand side down here, because there was a Ling, and he wasn't able to take the gold base, because it turns out there's a Ling on every expansion, or an Overlord that can see every expansion. Yeah. So, at this stage, it is just Sirius Black being like, you know what, I am going to kill all of the things. In fact, I'm going to speed things along until the meters come out and win, because at this stage, there is nothing to stop that at all. The bases are not moving, and the meters can just go straight to one of these bases and kill it. In fact, they're going to go down to this one. 
serious black wanted to see it through. So shall we. And thus, one base, two base, red base, blue base. Weirdly enough, you can see all the bases. Serious black, by the way, just checking around, trying to see where all the things are. And thus, and thus the replay was born. The train, the choo-choo train is real. Weirdly enough, Serious Black actually knows where this thing was. And therefore it's going to go and kill it off. And now the reveal is real, or it will be in about a minute or so, I think. Which means that this is the only building left. And Serious Black can end this game literally any time. Which is probably what he's going to do. As soon as he realizes his opponent has been revealed. Uh, there we go. Well, the thing is, he can see the freaking starport. He knows it's there. So I'm wondering what he's doing. He knows where the starport is. It's, it's, it's actually in his vision radius. Very firmly in his vision radius. But no, he leaves the game without destroying it. Oh well. Right, in that case, thank you for... Uh, Jazzway, he does not need lessons in BM. Tsk, tsk. Thank you for watching, folks. We'll see you for the next replay.